It is late Friday afternoon, October 26th, and this is the latest information on Hurricane Sandy. Maximum sustained winds are 75 miles per hour, which barely makes Sandy a Category 1 hurricane, but some weakening was forecast before the storm starts to make a more northerly turn toward the northwest back toward the mid-Atlantic states, and we are expecting more in the way of pressure falls as the storm transitions into a more hybrid or a subtropical type storm system. Currently, the movement is toward the north at 7 miles per hour, and is forecast to make landfall near the Delmarva Peninsula or New Jersey by 8 a.m. on Tuesday. However, with the increasing size of the wind field, the tropical storm force winds will be approaching the coast much sooner than the center of circulation. Also, even with this forecast track remaining well to the east of Cape Hatteras, North Carolina, due to the expanding wind field, the Hurricane Center has issued tropical storm watches from northern Florida all the way through the Outer Banks of North Carolina, and I expect more in the way of watches and warnings to extend all the way through the coast of Maine. This is the latest estimated surface wind diameter graphic from the National Hurricane Center, and you can see the size of the storm is already growing substantially. The tropical storm force winds almost extend to the east coast of Florida, and this wind radius is only going to increase over the next few days. This is a rough guideline to go by based on the current forecast track as to what type of winds each area could be facing, and essentially everything in green, yellow, and red is at least tropical storm force winds, and this is a huge area that's going to be impacted by power outages. We're going to be talking about millions without power for quite some time, even once the storm is all said and done with. So this is the main thing that everyone living across this area needs to be ready for, not to mention the extremely serious coastal surge problem that we're likely going to be dealing with near and just to the north of where the center makes landfall. We're talking about a constant fetch of southeasterly winds that's going to be piling up all this water in the western Atlantic right along the coastline, and it doesn't help that we're going to be dealing with a full moon right around the time that the storm makes landfall, which is going to enhance high tide. The following is a storm surge projection based on one model run, that being the GFS. So keep in mind, this is only a model forecast, and it's highly dependent on the accuracy of the track that the model is showing. So as we advance into Monday night and Tuesday morning, you can see extreme surge values beginning to develop along the coast of New Jersey, well north into Long Island, and as a matter of fact, the GFS is showing a bit more of a northerly motion, at least within the first 72 hours, so the storm is coming in north of the current Hurricane Center track. In fact, the GFS may be just a little too north for my liking, so if you adjust all of these values a little bit toward the southwest, you're still looking at a very serious scenario, especially for coastal New Jersey and Long Island. And also keep in mind that the model is not even showing the center crossing the coastline by this point, otherwise the surge values would likely be much higher. This is the latest surface analysis forecast from the Hydro Meteorological Prediction Center for days 3 through 5. Beginning Monday morning, you can see the storm just to the east of Virginia. By day 4, Tuesday morning, the storm is making landfall. And this forecast is in coordination with the National Hurricane Center. So it is in agreement with the track that we showed earlier in the video. And as we head on into day 5, the storm is moving almost west-northwest. And the pressure is still very low with the low pressure center moving out across Pennsylvania as a very slow moving storm at this point and this is going to be a heavy rainfall maker we're going to be talking about not only coastal flooding but also inland flooding as well and on the back side of the storm we're going to have a lot of cold air being funneled in from the northern United States and southern Canada and we're looking at a potentially significant snowstorm for the higher elevations of western Virginia based on this projection this is the latest five day precipitation forecast and we're looking at well over 12 to 13 inches of rainfall right along the coastline. But look at how high these values are as we go deeper inland. And this is only through five days. The precipitation is probably going to persist well beyond this time. Because remember, the storm is just beginning to make landfall within around 96 hours. So this is going to be a significant flooding event. Furthermore, as we just alluded to, we're going to be looking at potentially big snows out across West Virginia, and this is the snow depth forecast from the GFS model valid at day 6, and we're talking potentially up to 1 to 2 feet of snow in the higher elevations, and we're even looking at some light snow out across Ohio and Michigan. As we return to what is currently happening with Hurricane Sandy, as we take a zoomed-in approach with the visible satellite using one-minute intervals, we can see that the center of circulation is partially exposed with much of the strongest convection occurring to the north of the center. This is a good indication that the storm is beginning to acquire more so in the way of subtropical or non-tropical characteristics, but this was really not so much of a surprise. We've always expected 
somewhat of a transition, and whether or not the Hurricane Center still considers this a hurricane is almost a moot point. This is still going to be a very powerful storm, and we expect the central pressure to continue to decrease as we go deeper into the forecast period as the storm approaches land, as it will start to be enhanced more so by a non-tropical trough coming in from the central United States. We can see the overall setup continuing to evolve as forecast. We see Sandy approaching from the southwest Atlantic, but more importantly, we still have some pretty good ridging out across New England. This is going to prevent the storm from making a turn toward the northeast, or at least continuing with that northeast motion beyond 24 and 48 hours. Instead, it's going to hook back toward the left, toward the mid-Atlantic and northeast. Thanks to this trough approaching, it's starting to take on a negative tilt and the orientation of the trough, and also with the storm between the trough and the ridge, that's going to allow the storm to make a turn back toward the west-northwest, and it looks like there's a better model consensus trying to develop between New Jersey and Long Island as of this early Friday afternoon. This is the GFS presentation for Tuesday afternoon. You can see that the storm is making landfall near Long Island or just to the north, and you can see the reason why we're going to need watches and warnings everywhere from North Carolina through Maine as we're going to have all of this region being inundated by at least tropical storm force winds and likely wind gusts exceeding hurricane force. And as we head into late Tuesday night into Wednesday morning, the center of circulation is going to start moving more toward the west into eastern Pennsylvania. So this is not going to be just a coastal storm. I have to reiterate that over and over again because all of the northeast is going to be impacted in one way or another. I also want to stress that the GFS is just one model, and we also have other guidance suggesting that the landfall may occur a little bit quicker than otherwise indicated. This is the European forecast for the early morning hours Tuesday. You can see the center of circulation already approaching the central New Jersey coastline, and by Tuesday afternoon, the center of circulation is pushing into northern Maryland and the suburbs of Philadelphia, but we still have some onshore flow across much of the mid-Atlantic and New England states, so this is still going to be a major flooding concern along the coast late into the afternoon and evening hours, and this is going to be a long-duration event lasting more than one day. Easily 18 to 30 hours of tropical storm force winds will be possible. Finally, I'm going to leave you with a look at one of the latest model plots, but first and foremost, this is the Hurricane Center forecast track, the one shaded with dark red, and this is a little south of the current model consensus based on some of the data that has become available within the last six hours. I would be surprised if they don't shift the forecast track a little bit to, to the north, closer to central New Jersey and just south of Long Island, and that's still not going to be a very good scenario. Any track that places the center immediately to the south of Long Island is going to maximize the storm surge threat in that area with the persistent southeast winds on the eastern and northern side of the storm. So that is something that we're going to have to watch very closely, and we will continue to provide more updates at 28storms.com, the Hurricane Tracker app, and our social media channels. Stay tuned.